So this next little bit, uh, the team and I, we're going to take um, a little bit and just tell you about what we experienced, what we saw in Ottawa, and uh, kind of how it affected us. I know with me, yeah, sorry, you may be seeing it. I know with me, um, it made quite an impact, and I didn't realize how much until I was watching what was happening on the news, and I became just weighted and grieved, and I realized that I made such a major connection um, with those people. Um, just the compassion I had for them was just unbelievable, and um, yeah, sorry, I, you may not know some of the backstories. So uh, a few weeks ago, we were in Ottawa, and we had the privilege of just um, of leading people in worship. Believers, unbelievers, and it was incredible. People may not have realized um, exactly what you know these songs were, but you know they're raising their hands and they're pumping their fists, and everybody was just together, and it was just such an incredible moment to be out of the church, to be in, just to be in the world, and everybody together, and just seeing spirits lift, and just the weight that that may have been there just went away and it was incredible we had an incredible moment and and like the team keeps saying something lifted something broke there we had an impact in the spiritual realm and it was incredible it was incredible so in seeing that and then in seeing what's happening there now I was deeply grieved in my spirit and, and just wrestling with everything but God does make a promise, and He promised never to leave us or forsake us. And though we see with our eyes what's happening, and we think, man, this isn't right, this isn't right, God, where are you? But God is in it. He's in it. And it's not the believers that He's seeking that I believe. I believe it's the unbelievers that need to cry out. And they don't see it yet. Perhaps they're not desperate enough yet. Perhaps things need to get a little darker for them to finally cry out. And But as believers in the midst of it, I believe we can sing a hallelujah. Because we know there's victory in it. They don't see it yet. And perhaps it needs to get a little darker. And I, I just believe that it can be our prayer while that happens. Yes, God, you are faithful, and we can thank him, and we can raise a hallelujah. We can thank him. He's faithful. And we can pray for these people. Lord God, wake them up. Shake them. Shake them. Revelation is all about shaking people who are not yet awake. And I believe a lot of our churches need to be shaken too, because they're not awake. Yeah, they believe they're saved, but they're not awake yet. So as believers who are awake, we need to be praying for these people. But know that the God is in it. God is in it, and he's shaking. He's shaking the earth right now. So we can celebrate because in that, we should be able to, to see God is moving in this. And he is doing something worldwide, and it is going to be huge. So we can celebrate in knowing God is going to reap his harvest. Yeah. And I am just so thankful and so humbled that I can be a part of that. That I was a part of that on a global stage. And that's incredible. That, that's incredible. And I want to do it again. I, I don't know if we'll get that opportunity, but man, I want to be I want to be in the fight. And I I hope and I pray it's your desire to get in the fight. Because now's the time. Now's the time when the church needs to rise up. We need to get in that fight. And, and it's a different war. This is a spiritual war. This isn't a war against flesh and blood. This isn't a war against Trudeau. I know in our, in our humanness, we want to rise up and we want to, you know. But this is a war against spirit. 
So this is our war. This is a war that we're awake to. This is a war that we need to step into. And we need to pray. Yeah. Let me encourage you in that. So this morning, the team just felt on our hearts to kind of share some stories and just kind of pivoting off of what Justin was saying. We saw, I wish we could have taken all of you with us to see through our eyes what we saw. I had a different perspective, so we're going to just tell a little bit of, of each of us of what our experience and what, what we had seen. But for me, it was a little bit different because I wasn't playing an instrument and I was just leading. But what I saw on people's faces, I'll tell you one story. We had started, it was Saturday morning, it was a beautiful day, and there were like hundreds and thousands of people. But there was this teenage girl, I know she was a teenage girl, she was standing in the front, and you could see, if you have any discerning spirit at all, just to, to scan across the crowd, you could see the weight on everybody's spirit. And there was a seven, I, should, I feel like she's 17, I don't know why I have that number in my head, but I got 17. She was standing right there, and I looked at her, and I thought there was something in her spirit that I just was like, God? And as soon as we started singing, it's like her spirit clicked into what we were singing, and she broke down and cried. Like, the whole time, I'm not talking like little tears, I'm talking her spirit broke. I saw her spirit. It's almost like in that moment she was receiving healing. And then she started to sing. And through the whole thing, I watched her. She, the, whatever was on her was off. I saw grown men weeping, weeping in front of us. And you need to know, and those who are watching, know our hearts as a team. We didn't go there to pick sides. You need to understand in the spiritual world, Yes, we're on the King of Kings side, but in, the, in, in reflection into the, in the natural world, we didn't go to pick sides. We went to represent the King of Kings, and He is the one who will break the spiritual fight. He's the one. We went there to speak into the atmosphere and to change it. So know our hearts. We weren't there to like, oh yeah, we were there to say, hey, you need Jesus. And that was, that was mentioned many times. You need Jesus. Justin Trudeau, he needs Jesus. Our government it needs Jesus. Amen. And after we, we were leading, I was so... I, what you need to understand is we come to church on Sundays and we're used to each other. And yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. But when you're out leading worship and a million people and people do not know Jesus, you are the witness. You carry his presence wherever you go. And in that moment, I literally saw... We're called the open heavens, but I literally saw the heavens open. Literally, over millions of people. The weight was lifted. I felt it. Something changed in the atmosphere. And I scanned around, and there were Christians. Because you know, because they know every word. But they were singing, and they were praising. And I was like, yes, come on. If you know these words, and you know who the king of kings, war with us, fight with us. This is how we, how we fight. We worship. That for me, I was so humbled. Who am I? I'm a nobody. And I got the opportunity in front of a million people to say, Jesus loves you. That's the goal, church. No king of kings heart. His heart is breaking. This is not his agenda. Know that. But in the enemy's agenda, do you see what God did? He took a community of believers, put them on a center stage, and gave us the opportunity to say, Jesus loves you. And he died for you. That's his agenda. That's the king of kings agenda. Do you see that? When I was done singing and, and, and we were, we were, we were, our first set, I feel like we did like so many, we were on the, on the stage for like hours at different times. It was incredible. And God just did an amazing opportunity and opened up the door. But I, I 
kind of stepped back and I, I was on my way down and I, you need to know this as well. There were pastors there. The majority of the security that were around were pastors. I had pastors coming up to me saying, I'm a pastor from so-and-so. Another one, I'm a pastor from, like, there, there are churches and pastors standing up. But they're standing up on a level, they just because they're not seen doesn't mean they're not doing something, okay? Know that. But I was standing in the back and I was on my way down and I was so overwhelmed by what God was doing and what was happening that one of the security guards tried to help me down. So it was really icy and really cold. And he looked at me and he said, God is doing something. And I, at first that threw me because I'm like, the security guards telling me God is doing something. So obviously you know who God is. And I said, yes, he is. And I started to weep. He grabbed me and he held me. He said, this is amazing. Know that there are people that are crying out for God. And this is good to come on a Sunday morning. This is what we need as a church to feed into one another. But that's your, that's your mission out there, okay? And God has given us the biggest mission right now. Do, uh, do not look at this like, oh, this, they're saying that, they did this, and they did. Don't, don't lose your focus. The world needs Jesus, not your judgment. The Holy Spirit put that in my heart this week. The world needs Jesus, not your judgment. You're there to be the light, okay? I, there are so many stories that I just... We're gonna get some of the crew up here because I could tell you all day, and you know I like to talk, so we're gonna. I'm gonna stop, but I just want you to know from our hearts that be encouraged. God is absolutely doing something because I saw it with my own eyes. We have actually a major testimony. I want Neil to come up. He's my brother-in-law, and my sister, who wasn't well, couldn't be with us, but Donna was able to kind of navigate social media and found a testimony that we would not have been able to find if it wasn't for social media. So this is a miracle that God did. You need to hear this in your heart. So, yes, thanks for Donna being at home, being a prayer warrior all weekend. Uh, she was there watching the live streams, commenting, interacting with anyone that was watching online. And she came across a lady that sent her a private message on on Instagram, and she saw some of the, the posts that uh, Donna had been sharing, like tagging the Freedom Convoy, so that people could be aware of what's going on. Uh, she she saw one of Donna's posts and was so happy that she captured it. This lady, she said that she was there. Uh, the music was so encouraging, very different than all of the other music played that weekend. She felt the love and the warmth from the team on the stage, and and the words that were spoken. She said that that weekend she was planning to kill herself and something told her she needed to go to Ottawa and check things out and not to give up. So she was there for Saturday and Sunday and so overwhelmed with the love and the joy from everyone, she broke down crying because she thought, what if I didn't go to Ottawa? You know, she could be dead right now. She felt so overwhelmed with joy and hope she started walking around encouraging and loving on others she said that open heaven talked about healing and she thinks that she was healed of depression because she no longer felt that burden and the heaviness anymore so this you know this power of the, of the holy spirit waving across the crowd i'm sure it passed so many lives Donna asked this lady if she would like to share her story publicly, and she said that we could do that. She didn't want anyone to know what her name was or where she lives, because she's very well known, but this is, you know, we were, the team, we were praying for signs, miracles, wonders to happen, healings to happen, and this is a fantastic testimony, uh, a confirmation of, you know, the mission that we had going out there, battling in the spirit, fantastic results. There's you know, so many other stories to talk about. I, I was watching a stream even when we got back from a, a following weekend and I heard of a gentleman saying, you know, since he was 13 years old, uh, he's had problems with his knee. He couldn't walk far distances, couldn't run, anything like that. And he went out 
to the convoy and started walking around with his knee brace. And there was a lady there, kneeled down, prayed for his knee. He was able to continue walking throughout that day. He went back three times without his brace since then, completely healed. Absolutely a miraculous healing. So it was a life-changing experience. I, I really feel that we were able to show hope where there's been a lot of hopelessness. And the hunger that we observed in the crowd was so intense. Uh, like Dina was saying, you know, growing men weeping. I was moved to tears many times as I'm up on stage worshiping. It was a life-changing experience, and I am sure that that's just the beginning. You know, the battle may be done in Ottawa, but this fight isn't over. And I'm sure there's some more stories here, so thank you. Uh, definitely God was in the streets. Jesus was there. We walk around with baby buggies and kids were playing and all that. Um, uh, when we came off the stage, the, set, the stage manager I heard, I was like, what are you guys doing? Like, uh, when Dina spoke, when, when Al spoke, everything shifted because all day, all week, hold on, I'm not sure how long they were there for, I think two, two, uh, that when we came, they were all talking political stuff and all. This is more like a spiritual thing. We have freedom from somewhere different than what, what they have. So when I showed up with thousands here, thousands behind me, and I wasn't nervous one bit because I was there for a different reason than they were. I was there for freedom in Christ. They were there for freedom from, you know, uh, government or whatever, or magnetic song. And so that was really interesting. So the, the people who were unsaved, they were, I met one guy at a, a truck stop, and he said, I feel something in my heart that doesn't like church and all that, but I feel something in my heart. So that's the Holy Spirit. God, I just I love hugging people, and we hug people, let's get stronger. So it, there's something really started really great. When, when Al spoke, when Dina spoke to me, that was uh, the, the shift. It was huge because she prayed for uh, Trudeau, prayed for the police. Al prayed healing over everybody. You, you see it on Al's face. Right there, before he even said a word, oh my gosh, this is going to be huge. It was like, his face was like, just the, the God was going to speak in a minute. You know, God through Al, of course. But, but, you know, it was just so amazing because uh, we played a little part. We thought we were going to play a little part, but they called us back two more times to play last week, too, and they wanted us to play. Yeah. Anyway, it was really awesome. It was something different. The Bible talks a lot about strategy. And uh, one of the things that, that I guess a recurring theme is we're not warring against flesh and blood. And Ephesians 6, 12, it says... For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. What, has, what God has done in this past few weeks is nothing but miraculous. And you have to understand that you are strategically placed in this fight because your pastor, Pastor Dave, I was watching him, he was walking around and we kind of, you know, exchanged a, a conversation. He was looking at his notes. And then when he got up there, I think his notes just went up in the air because there's nothing in that place that was ordinary. From the moment we walked out on the stage, and you have to understand, this is a crowd of people that is I've never played in front of a crowd like this. Who am I? You know, we're just a team that said yes. From the moment that God placed it in Al's and Carrie's heart, and I know Pastor Dave and Sue were up in Ottawa, the willingness, willingness of our team was so fast and quick, and we don't know why. We got together and we were talking about why, how, and I think that whole week after we got back, we were still in awe of what God has done. And from my perspective, what I saw is we walked there, and it was early morning, minus 20 something, uh, playing guitar, never played in minus five, never played in minus two. This was minus 20, 26. 
God, when you are willing, God will take your willingness and he will propel you to the place where no demon, no devil can stop it. And when we saw the crowd getting ready to party, because that was the intent, this was not, uh, you know, nobody said, hey, in Flyers, there's going to be a Christian band that's going to come and change the whole atmosphere for the full weekend. This was a crowd passing out joints, smoking cigarettes, okay? And when the word of the Lord came, the crowd changed. The cigarettes started flying off mouths. Grown men weeping and crying before the Lord because when His power is at hand, nothing can stop it. And you all are part of this because your pastor took a step. This is not a popularity contest here. This is the outcast. We are the fringe. We are the few. But when God places you strategically, the walls come down. So be encouraged. This is not over. This has just started. So I encourage you, stand behind your pastor. God has placed this church. I love coming here. This is like a little oasis. And we're so blessed every time we come here. And I love you guys with the love of the Lord. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. I just want you to know that, and it's true of what Vitaly is saying, God has put Pastor Dave and Pastor Sue here. You have, I wish you could really comprehend what God is doing through them in this tiny little church. It's put Frankfurt on the spiritual map that God has said, I am going to pour out my spirit and it's going to be starting in the small and it's going to ripple effect. Yeah, you need to clap. I think you get it. If you can see what we saw, I, I had so many people come up to me and, and I, I, I make fun because I've never had so many strangers grab me. If you knew me before I was healed, I would have been like, whoa. But I had so many people that I had not known grab me. I had people kissing me on the cheek in tears, saying thank you. Don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you, okay? And it's not just Ottawa. When you go to work, when you're walking down the street, God will bring an opportunity across or somebody will need to hear the power of Jesus, and you've got it. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to... I just, first, sorry. I want to acknowledge Pastor David Sue. I just need to say to you, you inspire me. You inspire me. You are a warrior. And I'm inspired. There's other pastors out there that can have a big have a big bark. They talk a good game. But you're peaceful, you're gentle, and you're you stand strong. And in that I see Jesus. I don't see judgment. You are peaceful, you are loving, and you stand strong. I know you take a lot of hits. You and Sue, you take a lot of hits, but you don't budge. You continue to show kindness and love, and you remain strong. And I thank you for that. God bless you. Oh
Oh, oh, oh. 
going to share a little bit with you. And if you want to stay standing, it's up to you. If you want to sit, it's up, up to you. What is most comfortable? I think for me, as I try to talk about Ottawa, there's an extreme humbling that I feel. When the Lord said, prepare, to do open heaven ministry. Not in the least of my imagination do I think God, in that moment when he said prepare, he was gonna put us a capital hill to declare his name. Didn't see that at all. But what I wanna say is, and a testament to this church, because really this is like our home church, I'm going to be honest with you. This is where we are refreshed. Yes, it's a busy weekend, usually when we come, but we're refreshed here. But the call to just simply be obedient in whatever that looks like is what God is searching for right now. One of the scriptures that was a foundation to us stepping in that direction. I'm not even talking about Ottawa, I'm, not, I'm just talking about when he said go. He said, I am searching to and fro throughout this world for those who will be devoted to me because I will show myself strong on their behalf. That's his word. And if there's one thing that God has established in my life, since he called it to me, was he said, you have to get so solid in the word that you believe it without a shadow of a doubt. So that is where my foundation lays. I, I sit, I stand, what God has said will be done. And so in Ottawa, when we were here, and I spoke, remember that if, for those of you who were here, I was talking about King Priest, who are we? We are king priests. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And by the word of a priest, all matters are settled. That's what the word says. I hope you've had some time to think about that. That's who we are in Christ. We drove home that day and God said, go to Ottawa and I will take care of the rest. I had no idea what that looked like. None. All he was asking was for obedience. And I can't go into it all today, but go, come back, go, line up, text, this, that, next, pray, this person, that person, tick, 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 things were just falling in place. Can't explain it. I cannot explain it. But one thing I know about God is when he says, go, I'm in Sunday here, he's already in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, preparing everything because he exists outside of time. We need to understand the spiritual reality in which God operates. Our enemy, the adversary, uh, Vitaly brought it up. We fight principalities. Their disadvantages, they're always reactionary. Principalities cannot fight in tomorrow because the moment they make a strategy, God goes, I'm going to do this. He's already in tomorrow, moving something. So when God lines stuff up for people, I'm telling you this because it's important. Scripture says we need to be aware of the schemes of the enemy so he does not take advantage of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. The enemy has been scheming. Why? Now, if you remember the sermon, I talked about the Egyptian pharaoh who 
started to act a certain way because God had made a promise 400 years earlier. God made that promise. Was God's word performed? Let me ask you that question. Did God perform the word that he promised to Abraham? Yes or no? Yes, he did. <clears throat> what God has said regarding our nation will be performed. We need to understand that. We need to stand in that truth. So I'm going to come back to the word because I want to share what, what happened to me. One of my prayers, and always one of my prayers, is that when God takes open heaven somewhere, as a leader to this team and as a leader in the ministry, there is always a work to be done in our life as much as he's going to use us to work in someone else's life. That will not change as long until we are in heaven. And one thing I have promised to this team and everybody that is in the ministry is that I will never allow myself to be a limit or a cap to their faith. As a leader, I have to always move forward in God and, and always invite those around me to come with me. That's my job. And so stepping into Ottawa, that's why it was like click, 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 click. Things came together because I was willing to go where God said go. I'm not going to cap it. I'm like, oh, how are we going to get to Ottawa? I'm, I'm, no. God said go. I will do the rest. Okay, I go and you will do the rest. And I can't, I can't. Today I'm still like, uh. But the other thing God said when we were walking in the streets was he said, you need to pray for healing. I didn't know how that was going to come about. We and, and Saturday morning we had, you know, God had orchestrated so much. But there came a moment Saturday morning where God said, He just He just comes and then <clears throat> stuff comes out of me. I just don't know where it comes from, other than the Holy Spirit is talking. And so I actually have to watch the video back again and go, What did I say? Because it, it's so fast, it's so and it just flows. It's hard to explain. But I missed one thing Saturday morning that I didn't, that I corrected Sunday morning. And Jesus said specifically that he wanted me to pray for healing, but also for people who might have had uh, an effect to taking the vaccine. Because that's a reality. Some people have had some, some side effects. And so I mentioned that specifically Sunday morning. But that being said, again, all Jesus said was, pray for healing, and I will do the rest. I had no idea that story was coming. What you don't know is Vitaly's chest was healed the moment that I declared that. He didn't have time to say it. But the word says, Mark chapter 16, that when we go out and preach the word, God will work with us, confirming his word by miracle signs and wonders. That is the evidence that he is working with us. Were people healed? Yes. Do we have all the testimonies? No. Will there be people in heaven because we declared who Jesus was? Yes. Amen. The seeds are sown. People went home after that weekend would have to wrestle with Jesus is the King of Kings. We declared it multiple times. I said it. Psalm chapter 72 verse 8. It's inscripted in the peace tower of our nation, and it says, He shall have dominion from sea to sea. Who is the He? That is Jesus. Jesus has dominion from sea to sea. He is King of Canada. That is an established word of God, and we're not gonna we're not gonna change that. Prime Minister Trudeau can try to change that all he wants. The word of God is established. He has no hope of changing that. Because his word has been established. To understand what I'm saying today. So one of them in that moment, when I prayed for healing, I, I didn't even get to the prayer. I experienced something. So again, God always works in us as much as He works through us. So in my mind, I'm going back to that moment. And when I asked for people to raise their hands who needed healing. I was standing there looking out at the thousands of people and the hands that went up. And the scripture talks about 
a communication with God that is spirit to spirit. It's a spirit to spirit communication. I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The spirit of God revealed something to me in my spirit that I could not explain in that moment. I had no, I had no reference point for it. I was just like, uh, something just came into my spirit. I could not, could not explain. And it wasn't until I was driving home Monday, reflecting on the week, on the weekend, and just praying and crying in my van and stuff because there's so much. It's, it's hard to absorb. Here is what happened in, in my Bible. Here's a little note. Ottawa 6, February 2022. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Yep. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are food. There, therefore, Pray that the Lord of the harvest send out the laborers into the harvest. I could not explain that download that happened right then until I was driving home and the Lord said, this piece of scripture, I literally gave you a glimpse of my heart of what Jesus would see. And the team has talked about it. When I can't explain, open heaven has a tagline that says releasing heaven on earth. And that was our intention, declare Jesus as king and release his authority into the atmosphere and into the Ottawa and what was going on. That was the call. I was back behind the scenes in the tent and like, was it Vitaly? I don't know, one of them, oh, maybe Peter, said, you know, the tent stage manager, one of the other truck leaders, they came in and they're like, we don't know what you guys do. But something completely changed when you're on stage. That is someone who doesn't understand Christ trying to explain the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, are we done in Ottawa? No. Are we done in this fight? No. It's principalities, powers, and rulers that we fight against. But there's a couple of things I need us to understand. This was something I declared as part of our prayer uh, when I was praying, and, and God, so I had to watch the video again to hear what, I, what all I said, but um, it just comes out. When the scripture is in your heart and you speak, it just flows. Isaiah 46, verse 9, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, the ancient things, uh, ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my pleasure. That's what the word of God says. That's how God operates. He has already declared for our nation, the call of our nation. Another one that is here with me, uh, Psalm chapter 33, starting at verse 4, For the word of the Lord is right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. He loves righteousness and justice. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Verse 8, let all the earth fear the Lord. And I need to clarify that. That's not fear as in being afraid of God. That is fear in having holy reverence for who God is. Let all the earth recognize who God is. Let all the inhabitants stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Verse 10, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He makes the plans of the peoples of no effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. 
and the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. I need you to hear the word of the Lord today because it's scriptures like that that will keep us grounded amidst all the nonsense that's going on in our nation right now. We have to stay grounded in what God has said. Why did I read these scriptures? Why do they hold me so firm? Because when God says that we are king priests, as I said before, we are in his family. When God says, you're my children, and I want you to be imitators of God as to your children, Ephesians 5, verse 1. He says, now we are called to declare things as he has said. That's part of our responsibility. And we stand on his truth. So, there's a call in our nation. We're in the year 2022. This has come from several prophetic voices. There are multiple things that have been said from voices in different locations. I do listen to prophetic voices, but I personally look for, I look for consistent lines between multiple prophetic voices. Here is one of them. We're in the year 2022. Revelation chapter 22, verse 2. Part B. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now I asked Pastor Dave to grab a flag, and this is about all we got here. But, but to the best of my knowledge, Canada, I need to understand two things. Our flag is very symbolic. Canada, amongst other words, one of the words was that all eyes would be on Canada, and what happens here is going to shift what happens around the world. That's how that prophetic word came about. The leaf of, leaf of the tree is for the healing of the nations. And it's, step, it's sitting in uh, Revelation 22, verse 2b. To the best of my understanding, Canada is the only country that has a leaf on their flag. Why is this significant? Because it's written in scripture. Who declares the end from the beginning? God does. And if he's put a call on our nation, I don't care what Klaus Schwab tries to do. I don't care what things our prime minister tries to do to stop what God has already said, because it will not happen. What God has ordained for our nation will happen because he has declared it. And our call as his church is to rise and stand with the agenda of the Holy Spirit over our nation right now. That's our call. And we have to have ears. We have to have eyes. And be tuned to what is the Spirit saying. When we were in Ottawa, the sound of the trucks, trumpets, my goodness. Those horns. I was walking and praying in the Spirit. And it just, the horns, it's just like, there is something breaking right now. Every natural reality has a supernatural reality. And that's, we live simultaneously in natural and supernatural. Those horns, remember Jer Jericho, when they shouted, the walls came down. There was a significant result in that moment. What's the color of our flag? Give me one color. Red? Red? The other color? Who has a robe of white drip, uh, dipped in red? Jesus. Down to the very color of our flag. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords wears a robe of white, and he is the only one that has a red dipping that represents his blood that was shed. Do you see? Do you see the call of our nation?
this is where we stand. This is why we do what we do. Sorry team, I probably went way over 10 minutes, but there's an establishment and we have to be established in the word of God. Mainstream media, I don't want to listen to that because this is what I need to know. This is where I settle. It's the counsel of the Lord that will stand forever. In his heart to every generation. When I was here last night, I talked about the Pharaoh. <clears throat> Ramses and Moses being brought up in the house of the previous Pharaoh to learn how to be a king. I need you to understand something in that story. Did things get worse for the Israelites? As the plagues were coming, different things were coming. The Pharaoh did certain things. He made certain decisions. But when God was done, he made his promise to Abraham. He established it. We all said yes. When God was done, the Egyptian empire never returned to where it was. I know things don't look necessarily awesome if we get too caught up in this level here. But remember the God that we serve. And when he says it's over, it's over. When he says, my word has been established, it's established. And let's hold fast to what he's established in his word. And even just take time this week of meditating on what is this call for our nation. And it's white and red. Nothing is a mistake with God. I just want to pray for you all as the Lord leads. Father, I thank you for this congregation, this house. I thank you for Pastor David and Pastor Sue and their leadership. I thank you, Lord, that you've established them here and that you have set them in this time, in this moment to lead your people into understanding the truth of who you are and the truth of what you have planned and that which you have ordained us for in this specific time. I pray for every person here under the sound of my voice, I pray, Holy Spirit, that the mantle of your anointing or the amount of your anointing will increase on each person here. I pray, God, that they will work where they work, where they are in their days, that the presence of the Holy Spirit would overshadow them so much that when they walk into a room, the temperature changes. I pray, God, that there would be more release of your under, uh, understanding of you in their minds and their hearts as they study your word. I pray, Father, that there will be an increase of ideas, gifts, talents, new jobs, whatever is required in this house, that you will administer these things in their life and that you will cause all things to line up according to what you have planned for them. I declare today that they are your workmanship that is created in Christ Jesus to do good works which you have declared. Uh, prepared beforehand and they will walk in them. That is your word, Lord, and I declare that over this house and over all that are here today. Increase, Father. Influence, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. I believe the band has a couple more songs they'd like to just share with you. Be encouraged to worship. Before we go into this next song, I just want to really, these lyrics are so timely. I want us to ponder them, and then I want us to declare it together. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall. 
but you've never failed me yet. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battle's won, for you've never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word has come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. You've never failed me yet. I never will forget. Let's stand and declare this as well.
something that kind of involves this. So I need um, maybe Lonnie, if you would come here. You're kind of a flag guy, aren't you? Would you take one end? And um, Laura, maybe if you would take the other end, and, and if you would go down. Lonnie, if you could stand, stand here. And Laura's just going to go down as far as that'll. You know, it's one thing to pray for our nation. It's one thing to, you know, we sing, God, keep our land glorious and free. And God, we stand on guard for thee. And that Canada will be a blessing to the nations. But let me ask you a, a personal question. How many of you here have someone that you love that doesn't know the Lord yet? Let's kind of bring it down to home. Maybe what you guys don't know, I, I reached out to Billy Graham Association a number of months ago and, and I just was inquiring about something for Frankfurt, for evangelism, and and, um, and I kind of got on a mailing list, I guess, and a couple of days after we finished in Ottawa, I got an email from the Billy Graham Association, and they thought I would be interested in knowing that they sent a team to Ottawa in the days following and that they were happy to report that their team led five people to the Lord Woo! for the very first time. It's not just smoke and mirrors, folks. It, it, it's real people making a decision for Christ for the very first time. And I, and I just have to wonder, those five people, you can be sure they didn't go to Ottawa to get saved. And, and like someone said, who knows what they had in their pockets and, and blah, blah, blah. But I wonder how many of those five had someone that was praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a, a divine appointment. And whatever happened on the, on the stage the weekend before, it, it broke the darkness. So that God's light shine through and then a Billy Graham team member comes and just starts a conversation and ends up leading them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's God, folks. And so God, we lift up our unsaved loved ones to you. Maybe even represented these leaves on, on, the, on the flags. God, I pray for the salvation, for those that we love, for those that we can call out by name. God, I pray that you would have a, a divine encounter with them. Lord, we intercede for them. We don't know how you can do it or how you're going to do it. But God, all we do is, is we, we lift their name up to you. And we say, God, would you find a way to pierce through the darkness, the walls that are up in their lives. And, and would you do a miracle of transformation, of salvation in their lives? God, we do declare that we will stand on guard for our nation. And it may not be with boots and guns. But God, we stand with hearts tuned to you interceding for our nation, for our families, for our neighbors, for our co-workers. God, I pray that you would bless Open Heaven Ministries. Lord, I pray that you would continue to favor them in our culture. They have made friends with people that perhaps don't even go to church wouldn't call themselves Christians, but you've connected them. God, I pray, I, I, I pray your covering, I plead your blood over that ministry that you would go before them just as you open doors for that incredible weekend. 
God, I pray that there would be more to come. God, I pray for our town, for Frankfurt, as we even begin to prepare and plan for the summer and, and, and taking this message to our community. God, I pray that you would help us to see beyond maybe the walls that we built. These are, these are the last days. And so, God, I pray that there would truly be a church in us that would be glorious and free without spot or wrinkle that we would march after you and commit ourselves to you so we give ourselves to this lord lord bless each person here i i thank you for help i thank you for strength i thank you for safety god we don't take these things for granted but lord we walk in a freedom that says they are ours because of whose we are. Yes. And we're yours in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you folks. Thank you for being with us at Riverside this morning. And uh, don't hurry away. Visit, smile at someone. And uh, God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.